guys so today we are renovating a thick clay thatchy lawn that suffers every single autumn it gets red thread it gets wet it gets boggy we're going to make some improvements but it's going to take a bit of time to get it to a really good condition let me show you what we're doing now you can take any part of this lawn push it in and you can just feel it's thick clay this is really really thick clay so you can imagine when it rains the rain falls down onto the ground and it takes a long time to soak through so it tends to form puddles on the top and because of that it starts to weaken the grass and if it's hot as well you'll end up with a humid environment and that leads to diseases like red thread so the customer came to me this is we've only been in quoted this job before it's the first time we've done any sort of work on it and they said that they get red thread every year and it does tend to go brown in summer and it gets very boggy and wet over winter so we had a look round we could see that it was very thick clay so we're going to scarify to take out any thatch what's in there because thatch can lead to like thatch is like a bath sponge on top of the ground and that sponge holds water when you fill water up into a sponge it drips through doesn't it and it holds the water similar with thatch levels so you've got to keep your thatch down then we're going to punch some holes into the ground to try and improve drainage but it won't be a miracle cure when it's really thick clay there may be more things that needed to be done you may have to go really deep and put french drains in but for now the idea is we're going to aerate after we've scarified and then when we top dress we're going to be getting some compost into the ground and basically what that's going to do it's going to start improving the ground and just getting it working a little bit better we get some organic stuff in there starts to increase increase the microbial activity and that in turn you know, over a long period will begin to change the soil i have my still rl 540 scarifier and then we have the mower the landy compost spreader blowers rakes and the Wallensea holotine aerator I also have my Klassen aerator machine we have compost from Wix today been using that last few days and it is actually really really good in the compost spreader that we're going to be using then we've got a spreader loot fertilizer and a brush and a rake Now what you can do, because I get asked this question a lot, is what do you do when you've got weeds? Well, you have a weed spray and then you renovate several, several weeks later. Or you do your renovation and then you look at weed spraying a few months later. One other thing you can do is just to get a trowel or a little fork and dig out any difficult weeds. We've got some violets. I think it's a violet looking at the shape of the leaf yeah it's like a spade shape so you can try and get any difficult ones out and try and get all the root out that was my compost spreader rolling onto the lawn it's desperate to get some work done so that's that we're taking out what we can we don't want these because they're hard to kill. And I think we've got most of the roots out. Now they're currently having some building work done. So it's always worth just having a little look <coughs> for any stones or rocks. Because if they get in your machines, it's going to damage the blades, but also the, the rocks can actually fly out and smash windows. And there's a large expanse of glass across the rear of this property and I don't fancy having to pay to get that repaired which would be considerable so we're going to be using a holotine aerator machine after the scarifier but the tool for hand aerating in corners is this Wallensea it's nice and light and it does a good job if you go on Amazon the reviews are top notch
Right, so what you've seen is a double Scarify clearing up, mowing, hollow tyre aeration. We wanted the ground to be fully prepped and that is the most important thing, making sure all these steps are taken care of. Yes, you can chuck seeds straight on the ground, some will take, some won't. But the more steps you do, the better the results in general. Plenty of birds flying around. One over there. So they're going to be uh, they're looking for worms at the minute. So yeah, you can see it's aerated really, really well. Now over in this corner, I've gone over with the hand aerator as well to make sure there are plenty of holes in here. This was really sticky, solid clay. So it's been roughed up with the hand scarifier. And you can see the grooves up and down there. And you can see the aeration holes. So some are gonna go down the holes, some are gonna go on the soil. And then when it's all pressed in, it's gonna get squashed into the soil. So it doesn't get blown around. Same again there. And right up to the edge so in general it's actually come up pretty well and I'm pleased with it and what you saw me putting on at the end was a bit of gypsum and a bit of fertilizer I just put them in the same hopper because it was quite small the gypsum and um, that's going to start to improve the clay soil as well as the compost we're going to put on after the seed so I'm going to crack on because it's windy I'm going to use the drop spreader for the seed. We'll see how we get on. Mm -hmm. 